Here we are given a first order linear differential equation along with an initial condition, and we have to solve it. We have a four step method for doing that. The first step, very important, is to be able to get the equation in the so-called standard form. And if you look at the standard form, what you have is the derivative of y with respect to x plus some function of x multiplied by y, and then that's gonna equal some other function of x that we call q of x right here. So we need to manipulate the given equation so that it kind of looks like that form. And in order to do that, we will begin by subtracting two from both sides of our equation. Now we have dy dx plus, and in fact, we wanna manipulate a little bit the way in which this is written. We're gonna write that as three over x in parentheses multiplied by y. That would be equivalent to the original form. Over here, we have three x minus two. So indeed, we've already got it in the standard form. We have our dy dx right here. This function of x is our p of x. Then we have our variable y right here. And then we finally have the other function of x, 3x minus 2. So that completes step one. We can go to the second step, which tells us to determine an integrating factor. Now the integrating factor, which we call mu of x, is equal to e raised to the integral of our p of x dx. So recall that this three over x is our p of x. And therefore to get the integrating factor, which again is mu of x, we will set this equal to e raised to the integral of three over x dx. Now we have to evaluate that integral, which perhaps we can do on the side here. We can begin by factoring a three out. So it's three multiplied by the integral of one over x dx. We recall from basic calculus that the integral of one over x dx is essentially the natural log of x. So you get three ln of x, and then we will find it advantageous to use a logarithm property to sort of shift the coefficient into the exponent position. So you get ln of x cubed. That's a basic logarithm property. So here we have our integrating factor mu of x is equal to e raised to the ln of x cubed. And what's nice here is we have the exponential function and the natural log function, which are inverses, so they cancel, and this leaves us with the mu of x equaling x cubed. So that's our integrating factor. We move to the third step, which tells us to multiply the equation written in standard form by the integrating factor. So we're gonna borrow this equation right here, and we're going to multiply both sides of it by the integrating factor, which again is x cubed. So this side gets multiplied by x cubed, and then this side also gets multiplied by x cubed. We don't need to, but as an instructive exercise, we're going to distribute the x cubed. So you would have x cubed dy dx plus, you're going to have three x cubed over x when you distribute it to that term. That simplifies, of course, to just 3x squared. And then that's multiplied by y. Over on the other side, we may as well distribute this x cubed as well. So you're going to have 3x to the power of 4 minus 2x cubed. Now, as noted, we didn't need to do that, but we decided to in order to be instructive here. For instance, the steps tell us to recall that the left-hand side is just the derivative of the integrating factor times y with respect to x. The derivative of the integrating factor times y with respect to x. So in other words, this left side is going to sort of be repackaged into the derivative of our integrating factor, x cubed, times y with respect to x. Now we can verify that this works because if you think about it, if you were going to do the derivative of x cubed times y, you would have to employ the product rule. Now the product rule would tell us to take x cubed and multiply it by the derivative of y. So that would be x cubed times dy dx. And then add the y times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. And there it is right there, y times 3x squared. So indeed, we can repackage the left side into this nice tidy little form here. And that's advantageous because it allows us to move on to the next step in this procedure, which tells us to integrate that last equation and then solve for y. So we're gonna now integrate and solve for y. 
We basically have to integrate both sides of the equation. And what's kind of nice here is we have another sort of inverse operation going on. You have the antiderivative along with the derivative. Those will cancel each other out. This leaves us with x cubed times y. And then on the other side, we're going to integrate just using some basic sort of power rules. So this is 3x to the power of 5 over 5 minus this is 2x to the power of 4 over 4. The 2 over 4 can reduce to just 1 over 2. So it's actually x to the 4th over 2. And then we have our constant of integration. Now we still need to solve for y. And the best way perhaps to do that is to multiply each term by x to the negative 3. We will see why this is a nice little maneuver in just a moment. Every term, including the constant of integration, now, x to the negative 3 multiplied by x to the positive 3. Remember that you would have to add these exponents. So if you do that, you would have x to the 0, which is just 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. So you'd have 1 times y, which is just y. And over here, you multiply and add the powers. You're going to get x to the power of 2. So 3x to the power of 2 over 5. Same ball game here. Add the powers. So you'll have minus x to the power of 1 over 2 and then plus the constant of integration times x to the negative 3. Now, we're not quite done because we were given an initial condition. Recall that y of 1 was equal to 1. So we're going to write that down. y of 1 equals 1. So what this means, of course, is that the x value is equal to 1, which we'll plug in here, here, and there. And then our y value is also equal to 1 in this case, so we'll put a 1 right there. So we're going to have 1 equals, over here this just will become 3 fifths minus 1 half, and then plus c, because 1 to the negative 3 is just a 1. Why don't we subtract the 3 fifths and the 1 half? You'd have to find common denominators and all that good stuff, but we'll omit that. That just is 1 tenth plus c. And then we'll subtract 1 tenth from both sides of the equation to get 9 tenths. So we figured out the constant of integration. Now we can write down the final answer by plugging it into our solution here. So we're going to have final answer y equals 3x to the power of 2 over 5 minus x over 2 plus 9 tenths x to the power of negative 3. This would be the correct answer to the question.